right now the museums find themselves in Europe and North America mainly find themselves in a very very unique and challenging challenging situation um, having asked them having to ask themselves fundamental questions such as you know how accessible are we as a museum how inclusive are we um, how diverse um, how did or does still the pandemic influence the way we're you know, doing exhibitions in the future? Is the blockbuster dead? Um, do we have to downgrade? I think it would be great to discuss how radical museums can be in terms of changing their structures, in terms of facing their challenges. So ideally the symposium brings up a lot of questions that are current right now, but also it brings up um, ideas how they can be implemented. So that we come up with an action plan. I think only if there is a real understanding that things can only change if it's in a sustainable way. So it's not mm -hmm. only about this one exhibition that looks at diverse perspective or this one symposium that talks about decolonization, but it really needs to be something that goes deeper and uh, continues that there is a real kind of shift in, in the museum policies that then also will help to bring in um, multiple perspectives into the space of the museum. The big question is how inclusive is this idea of heritage? Um, if a museum, for example, claims to, to um, represent the heritage of a society, they really have to look at the society as a whole and really include the different migrant perspectives and the really the different um, aspects of society when they talk about heritage. Um, national is always a bit tricky, I think, because it's limiting and um, you know when you talk about heritage by migrant um, Germans, for example, they bring with them a, story, a history which, is, which comes from outside Europe, for example, outside Germany. So it's, um, the, the national is maybe a bit tricky, but heritage itself is um, important if it comes, you know, if it reflects the wider society. It is important that cultural practices try to find ways to create projects that are accessible. Mm -hmm. So when I speak about accessibility, it's not only about being open towards a specific audience or so on, but also really starting with the way how things are being communicated so that it is less maybe about this often kind of theoretical curatorial speak, let's mm -hmm. say, that maybe sometimes curators feel like obliged to use because, you know, you have to show that you know what you're doing. That might be clear for us in the little arts bubble, but are not necessarily yeah, clear to someone outside of that. So I think this is a really important aspect of it, um, beyond thinking around who a curator wants to have as an audience in, in the museum. So I think it's really related to these questions. Museums, again, in Europe and North America have collected very, very rather exclusively um, and creating a very narrow canon, including the you know, usual suspect names, but um, really managed to <laughs> exclude so many cultural producers, artists who you know, existed and worked and, and created at the same time. And um, you know, we're very optimistic, or oh, I'm very optimistic that now is a good moment to, to do things right, you know, to go into the future and really look at your collection and when you take, you know, take money and, and, and um, start buying um, new pieces for your collection, you really think in a broader, um, broader sense, a more, a more inclusive sense. So you, you can't go on, um, you know, collecting so exclusively like, you know, the museums have done it the last hundred years. That is important that museums are, of course, like spaces of knowledge, but I think there should be also spaces of experimentation and of questions. And we know also how much collections have been, you know, very subjectively collected by specific ideas or foci, or like even not looking at certain narratives, if we speak about European or North American museums that for a long time ignored everything that was outside of that. And I think it's good to 
deal with that openly and also maybe have projects or exhibitions that really openly ask questions and um, show that the museum is also a space that learns and that maybe leaves things also open to be answered by the audience, that it's not always like the mm -hmm. ultimate truth that's being spoken through that institution, but it's like an exchange or vice versa conversation. And I think this is only possible if it's being acknowledged by the institution that they can also fail. One way obviously would be to get rid of power, give away power and um, distribute it in a more horizontal way, you know, to include people and give them power because through do doing this uh, the idea of power kind of becomes obsolete or becomes something else and um, this in a way is a beautiful message I think to give away power, especially in these times, um, you know, as, you, as, as we're looking at um, anti-liberal tensions etc. Um, I think the idea to give away power is um, a strong sign which you know could come from the museums. I mean most of the museums also maybe know that that they do have a voice uh, that can be really strong in a way how they position themselves. I mean a lot of museums say or often feel like they have to be kind of neutral or not are not necessarily political but I don't think that's that's true because with everything they produce and every project um, all these questions around collections are of course also political and I think um, in that way, institutions have the chance to use that voice and um, to, to really um, provide insights or knowledges that maybe then also go against certain tendencies in society and by making a stance against that, 